All right, what's up everybody? I am Space Mike, and I actually just got back to the United States. I was in the country of Jordan for over a week, and coming home to this news is pretty insane. The Soyuz MS-10 spacecraft had a launch failure, but the crew survived, even though the launch abort tower had already been ejected by the time of the anomalous event. So this is insane. We need to talk about it. We need to talk about what happened and why this is actually a triumph, because the crew is still alive. That's a big deal. Huh. So we need to talk about what we know, what we don't know, and for crying out loud to not speculate. So here's what we know. The Soyuz MS-10 spacecraft launched on Thursday, October 11th at 8.40 Coordinated Universal Time. On board the spacecraft was Russian cosmonaut Alexei of Chinin, which was supposed to be his second space flight, and NASA astronaut Nick Haig for what was supposed to be his first space flight. Everything seemed to be going well, and the rocket lifted off at its scheduled time, which at 8.40 Coordinated Universal Time was 11.40 Moscow Time. We got some beautiful shots, and I love the drone footage that Roscosmos has been taking at these Soyuz launches, but around two minutes into the flight, they ran into a booster problem. The strap-on boosters that are technically the first stage of the rocket were supposed to separate cleanly in what's known as a Korolev cross. The live broadcast showed multiple pieces of debris separating from the rocket around two minutes into the flight, when the four boosters of the first stage were supposed to drop. A moment before the anomaly, there was a large puff in the exhaust stream, which was actually the escape rocket, the main escape rocket separating from the top of the launch vehicle. A camera inside the capsule showed some pretty violent jolts. That's probably the most violently I've ever seen cosmonauts and astronauts be thrown around during a crewed launch. We started hearing an emergency transponder beeping, and then here's where things get confusing, because we hear Launch Control announce that there's been a flight anomaly at T plus 165 seconds into flight, and yet, the stream continues on as if the flight had been normal. The launch animation continues to run through different timelines of the launch and announces a separation of the second stage from the third stage and that eventually the capsule had reached orbit, even though the astronauts were claiming that they were in weightlessness and that things definitely were not right. We started hearing callouts that the capsule was in a ballistic trajectory and that it had successfully separated from the rocket. That at least was true, but not during its intended flight plan. The Soyuz MS-10 capsule was somehow able to separate from its orbital module and its service module, deploy its parachutes, and landed near the town of Karjal in Kazakhstan, about 400 kilometers downrange from the Baikonur launch site. Rescue and recovery teams were immediately dispatched and were able to rendezvous with the capsule within an hour. Within two hours from the launch, the crew were safely outside of the vehicle and on their way to an airfield to undergo debriefing. I personally was freaking out up until seeing these pictures and video of the crew, Alexei Ovchinin and Nick Haig. Once I saw them safe, then I could calm down. So according to the telemetry of the rocket, the launch escape tower was ejected. The large tower at the top of the rocket was ejected on, as planned at 114 seconds into the flight. And then the first stage separation occurred at 117 seconds into flight. The first stage being the four strap-on boosters on the side. And then the emergency escape system, the secondary emergency escape system, was fired at T plus 123 seconds. So between 117 seconds and 123 seconds, was when this emergency occurred and the onboard systems detected that there was an emergency and activated that secondary emergency escape system. What is the secondary emergency escape system? I had no idea this even existed. The secondary escape system is actually inside of the payload fairing. During the phase of flight after they eject the launch abort tower and before they eject the payload fairings, there are four solid rocket motors inside the fairing called RDGs. One pair of motors is activated in an emergency to eject the spacecraft from a failing rocket, and then the other two pair of engines fire 0.32 seconds later. The failure command to launch this system is all done automatically and is based on sensors that are measuring the angular velocity of the second and third stages. And if those sensors detect a deviation in the vehicle that exceeds seven degrees of what they're supposed to be flying at, then an accident command is issued which triggers that emergency escape sequence. 
In descriptions that I've read online from Ros Cosmos, the RDG motors will separate just the descent module and the orbital module on top of that away from the failing rocket and doesn't include the service module that's normally part of the Soyuz spacecraft. In any case, at T plus 160 seconds, they separated the descent module from the orbital module and entered into ballistic re-entry mode. In this ballistic descent mode, the capsule is able to orient itself properly so that the parachutes can deploy, the rockets at the bottom can fire just before touchdown so it'll have a nice soft landing. However, because it was a very steep ballistic re-entry, they experienced 6.8 Gs of forces on their way down, which is okay. You can take, you can, the body can, ta can take that, but quite a bit more than normal re-entries. According to NASA, they had a brief communications blackout with the capsule, but they had a successful touchdown about 30 minutes after launch near the town of Carazal, as I said, which is about 400 kilometers downrange from the Baikonur Cosmodrome. So now the investigation begins, and Roscosmos has to figure out what the heck went wrong on this launch, because the next crewed launch is supposed to happen in December of this year, and right now there's three crew members at the International Space Station. There were six, but three of those crew members returned just last week. And the crew that's up there right now, the Soyuz capsule that's docked to the space station that they're supposed to return home on, is the one that has the leak in it, the drilled hole that had that whole Soyuz leak. I mean, it's plugged, it's safe, they'll probably be able to return home in that completely fine, but holy crap, what is going on in Russia right now? A couple of things that might help with the investigation is that there was a new and improved telemetry system that was installed on this mission called an Astra telemetry system. And hopefully that will be able to provide a lot more data. The descent capsule has already been returned to Roscosmos and that at least has all the telemetry on board that. But they've already been finding pieces of the rocket. They found some of the pieces of the boosters, part of the core stage, which is actually the second stage of the vehicle. Uh, they found one side of the payload fairing. So recovery teams are finding pieces of the rocket that have landed on the steps of Kazakhstan, as they normally do during uh, routine flight plans. This one, they're just where the pieces are falling are a bit closer than what they were supposed to have been. According to NASA, the station has plenty of supplies for the crew that are up there right now, and that they could operate the station without a crew if necessary. But they're already making plans to the activities of the crew up there right now. Nick Haig was supposed to be going on an EVA spacewalk with Alexander Gerst to replace some of the uh, nickel iron batteries with the new lithium ion batteries that were delivered up by a Japanese cargo ship just last month. I don't know about you, but I freaked out when I heard this news. When I first saw the headline that there was a launch failure of a crewed Soyuz capsule, my heart just sank. So this really is a triumph. The positive side of all this is that the crew survived. The crew survived. They're fine. They're fine. They're not even injured. And I didn't even know that there was this secondary emergency escape system on the Soyuz vehicle. That's amazing. Just one more reason why this is an amazing vehicle and the Soyuz rocket in general and is an amazing rocket. But uh, what's going to happen from this point? This is insane. The Soyuz FG rocket, that's the specific de designation of the Soyuz rockets that are used for crewed launches. It's going to be grounded for a long time until they figure out what the heck to do. And if they do approve future launches like, without doing any type of work or investigation on other rockets, that would just be very unwise. But the way things are going in Russia lately and the kind of obvious level of quality control that's going on there makes me very nervous for future your flights. In the coming weeks and months though, as more information starts coming in, hopefully the investigation results will be published or at least shared with NASA and then NASA will in turn share that with us, the public. In the meantime, we got to keep speculation down. We can't fuel rumors, we can't trust unconfirmed sources, and even some of the uh, official like uh, news publications from Russia that are only quoting industry sources without any names shouldn't necessarily be trusted. Take everything that you hear with a grain of salt. Let's keep our ears to the ground, figure out what happens, and see what sort of changes need to happen in order to continue flying to the International Space Station. What do you guys think is gonna happen? Are we gonna have to abandon the space station? Or are we gonna have to send crew up and have some sort of uh, emergency situation? Maybe SpaceX and Boeing will get their act together and have their vehicles ready sooner than we hope for. Who knows, maybe we'll even have some sort of uh, rescue situation with China 
China or something like that. Probably not, but wouldn't that be amazing if a Shenzhou vehicle were able to fly to the ISS? That definitely won't happen because the next Shenzhou vehicle isn't going to fly until 2020, but I, I can still dream. In any case, let me know what you think about this. Uh, share with me sources that you hear, videos that you get. Uh, go to my Discord channel. There's links in, in the description below where we can talk about this. And yeah, this is a very, very big deal. So I'm going to be following this closely and uh, get back to my regular programming after this. So thank you for watching this. Let me know what you guys think about this and any other new information that you hear. And until the next time I see you, keep on moving onwards and upwards. And don't forget, Ad Astra to the stars.